Dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I would like to discuss with you from the topic phenol, reactions of phenol, electrophilic substitution reaction and Kopp-Schmidt reaction. So our learning objectives are to understand the reactions of phenol, that is electrophilic aromatic substitution, bromination, nitration and sulfonation and carboxylation, that is Kopp-Schmidt reaction. And coming to the aromatic electrophilic substitution reaction, uh, that is, if the resonance structure of phenol, when you consider it, you can see that the negative charge is located at ortho and para position of the benzene ring. Uh, that negative charge you can I have shown here. And uh, this is the resonance structure of phenoxide. If you consider the resonance structure of phenoxide, you can see that the negative charge is also located at the uh, ortho and para position. So the ortho and para position is more uh, a, a nucleophilic uh, when you consider the meta position. So the, you can easily add electrophile at ortho and para position. So hydroxyl group is a powerful activating group. At the same time, it is an ortho para director uh, in electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. And phenol itself reacts with the bromine in aqueous solution to yield 246-tribromophenol in nearly quantitative yield. And here, uh, the Lewis acid is not required. Usually, we add Lewis acid for electrophilic substitution reaction in the case of benzene. But here, it is not required because hydroxyl group is activating group. And uh, uh, that is why we are using only bromine and uh, uh, in aqueous solution. And this is the reaction scheme, phenol with the bromine, you get 100% yield of 246-tribromophenol plus HBr. And if you want to go to do monobromination, uh, what do you have to do? It can be achieved by carrying out reaction at low temperature in the presence of carbon disulfide that you can see here, carbon disulfide. 5 degrees Celsius, that is at low temperature. So, and the condition that reduce the electrophilic reactivity of bromine at low temperature, the, you get less concentration of bromine, and there is only possibility of getting monobrominated product, that is parabromo. So it is highly activated when compared to ortho, and ortho there will be a problem of strict strain also. And the mechanism can be shown like this, and uh, the lone pair on oxygen can activate this para uh, carbon and uh, like this double bond break here double bond break here and bromine it is uh, you know the partially polarized like this positively one bromine is positively polarized another one is negatively polarized so it can attack this one bromine and it can kick off its br minus and you get the structure like this, an intermediate, and uh, uh, immediately this intermediate can uh, uh, can aromatize uh, like this, and you get parabromophenol. And next aromatic electrophilic substitution is uh, nitration. Similarly, the OH group is an, uh, as we already seen, it is an orthopara directing group and. Uh, uh, the, because of resonance, these are these two positions are electron rich, and it does not require uh, con, uh, this mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid for nitration. Dilute nitric acid is enough because it's already hydroxyl group is an activating group. And if you react in phenol with the dilute nitric acid, you get ortho and para uh, pro nitro phenol in the ratio of 36 ortho and 25 percent is para and these two isomers can be separated because in ortho isomer you have a strong intramolecular hydrogen bond at the same time in para isomer you have uh, a, an intermolecular hydrogen bond so the ortho compound uh, having lower boiling bond because it is uh, intramolecular hydrogen bond so it can be separated by steam distillation Coming to the mechanism of this uh, nitration, and um, first one is the formation of electrophile that is NO2 plus. It is uh, as shown here, nitro NO2 plus electrophile can be formed like this. 
and next one is uh, there are three possible possibility of attack of this no2 uh, one is uh, the ortho position that is this and this one another one is para position it can attack at the same time it can attack on uh, 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 meta position so we have to consider which is the most stabilized one so if we consider the ortho attack that is uh, ortho this carbon attack this no2 plus and you you this carbon is an electro nucleophilic then uh, you get an NO2 here and this carbon will positively charge and this intermediate is uh, you know resonance stabilized like this and you have a very stable intermediate you, you, you here that is shown here this is highly stable intermediate so this is a resonance stabilized st uh, structure uh, if you have the NO2 at ortho position and when next one when you consider the meta attack and you can see an intermediate like this uh, the, this carbon attack this no2 group and this carbon get positively charged and this carbon is uh, resonance stabilized like this and you get only three structures and this when you compare the resonance structure of ortho this is less stabilized it has less number of uh, resonating structure and uh, this arch lone pair this this lone pair is not involved in a resonance structure also and when you consider the pair attack it is similar to ortho one and uh, this carbon attack this uh, electrophile and electrophile added at this carbon and the, there will be carbocation here and this carbocation is resonance stabilized and you get four resonance stabilized structure and this double bond is also involved in this resonance structure. Sorry, the lone pair is also involved. That means this is the most stable resonance structure, and that is why we are getting uh, the ortho and uh, para product in the case of nitrogen. And coming to the sulfonation, sulfonation of phenol, phenol react with the concentrated sulfuric acid to yield mainly ortho sulfonated product if the reaction is carried out at lower temperature that is at uh, 25 degrees celsius that's uh, almost room temperature and you get parasulfonated product at high temperature that's 100 degrees celsius and this is an example of thermodynamic versus kinetically controlled reaction because uh, phenol with the concentrated sulfuric acid at lower temperature you get uh, very quickly this sort of sulfonated product and this is major product and this is kinetically controlled and it's very fast and when you have a temperature of around 100 degrees celsius you get para uh, isomer and this is a major product and this is thermodynamic dynamically controlled product and uh, next one is the mechanism of sulfonation and uh, sulfonation sulfuric acid two moles of sulfuric acid uh, dissociate to give so3 that is sulfur trioxide and uh, this can act as an electrophile and this phenol uh, uh, they react with this sulfur trioxide and there will be possibility of ortho and para attack and the pa in ortho attack this carbon get attacked this uh, sulfonate sulfur trioxide sorry and uh, you have a so3 minus here and you get a double bond here and this uh, finally aromatized and this base hso4 minus can help to aromatize this benzene ring and you get a sulfonate here uh, so3 minus attached to ortho position of hydroxyl phenol that is a uh, hydroxyl group and finally it is uh, acidified by using sul uh, sulfuric acid aqueous sulfuric acid and you get ortho phenol sulfonic acid similarly phenol can also be, be attacked at the uh, para position at a high temperature it is a thermodynamically controlled reaction and it is a slow reaction and uh, you get a structure like this an intermediate and this intermediate get aromatized with the help of a base hso for minus that you get here and it's a very fast reaction and you you can add so3 minus at para position of the hydroxyl group and finally it get aqueous hydrolyzed and form paraphenol sulfonic acid and the final one called carboxylation reaction this can be used for synthesizing salicylic acid usually phenol react with the sodium hydroxide 
form phenoxide or sodium phenoxide and this sodium phenoxide react with carbon dioxide to give carboxylate salt uh, uh, as shown here and it is industrial synthesis of uh, salicylic acid and you get sal sodium salicylate finally it occurs hydrolysis uh, in the presence of acid which form salicylic acid and salicylic acid is an important material for the production of aspirin and the importance of salicylic acid in the industrial organic chemistry is demonstrated by the fact that over 6 in 10 raised to 6 kilogram of aspirin are synthesized in the United States each year. So it is an important strand material for preparing aspirin. And aspirin, a popular analgesic which can be prepared uh, uh, from the salicylic acid uh, by treating with acetic anhydride in the presence of sulfuric acid and you get uh, orthoacylated salicylic acid. This is called aspirin plus acetic acid, byproduct is acetic acid. And this is the mechanism of a carb carboxylation. First, uh, it make a new bond between nucleophile, that is adene ring, and an electrophile like this. This is electrophile, C double bond O, double bond O, that is carbon dioxide. And this phenoxide react like an enolate, and it's a strong nucleophile, and nucleophilic attack of phenoxide anion, anion on carbonyl group of carbon dioxide give a substituted cyclohexadienone intermediate. This is cyclohexadienone intermediate. And uh, this one undergo a ketone enol tautomerism. And uh, cyclohexadienone intermediate give the product salicylate. And uh, this, this is salicylate anion. And in this case, the enol, because of its aromatic character, is more stable tautomer out of this. And finally, it get hydrolyzed. Okay, uh, so we have learned the re important reactions of phenol that is electrophilic aromatic substitution like bromination, nitration, sulfonation, and carboxylation. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching.